Hello everyone, this is the first of three videos outlining how to use the SoundJack peer-to-peer low latency music system in order for us to be able to connect real time with one another. These are specifically made right now for the application at CU Boulder. Um, this first video is geared towards how a student would just use their computer um, a pair of wired headphones and the microphone on their computer and Wi-Fi to connect to the soundjack.eu platform in order to join a coaching with your pianist who is in a collaborative piano studio at CU. So the first thing you want to do if you haven't done this already is go to soundjack.eu and this window opens up and then you want to come over here and click register. And this is where you sign up your name, username, password, make your password word, confirm all that information in order for you to be able to log in. So obviously it already has my information. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And then that takes me to this next page where you see there are some more um, little pull down menus. The next thing you'll want to do on your first visit is click download. This is how you download the free software from SoundJack. As you can see, there are three different versions. There's a version for Mac, a version for Linux, and a version for Windows. Um, I'm basically going to be talking about Mac in this tutorial. I have not downloaded it for Windows. Um, I have colleagues who have, and the only difference I believe is you need to use two different drivers uh, for a Windows computer that are explained in the instructions when you download the Windows version. All right, so next I am going to, once I've done all that and I've downloaded the software, what's going to happen is, is you're going to get a little wizard window open up and there's going to be this little black bullseye icon in it and a file, right, an applications file. And you need to drag this into the applications file where it's going to live and then you're going to open it. And what happens when you open it is it appears in your dock like this with a little black dot and then also you can see that it's operating in the background. So now that I know that my software is working on my, on my laptop, I'm going to come back here so that I can get to the control page and I'm going to click the stage button. <clears throat> and the stage is your control panel for how to select who you're going to connect with and also in order to control um, only about three different items over here for the sound quality and how to maintain it. Um, at this point, what I want to bring up is this control kind of column over here to the left. All these little settings, pretty much all of them we're going to leave alone. Expert settings, public stage, manually accept calls, you're going to leave alone. This other one you do not need to know about. These two arrows, input, output, since you're only on your computer at the time, whether it's a Windows or a MacBook, you are only going to use as an input the built-in microphone on this computer. It's a MacBook Air microphone. And output, I have plugged in hardwired um, external headphones. And that comes up when you go also to this menu in System Preferences. Again, this is in a Mac. You go to the sound icon. You click on it. And notice that output says external headphones and input says MacBook Air microphone, okay? So that system preferences setting has to match as well as these two items, it's very important. If they don't, this is not gray, it turns red, okay? Also, we're going to leave this 48,000 hertz alone, we're gonna use sample buffer 64 alone. Send channel should be on one, since you really aren't sending anything except one channel through your microphone. This is what is the local input signal. Generally, you can slide that little bar all the way over to the right. It's not going to affect anything. We leave zero sample buffer alone. We leave this alone. This network buffer number here is 128. This we're going to adjust according to how far away we are from the other person we're connecting with. When you're in the building at CU, you're generally going to keep it at 128. You're not going to worry about it. Um, if you're at home or say between 30 and 50 miles away, you might start to play a little bit with 256 and 512, but for now, you are going to leave it at 128. 
you're also going to leave this codec at Opus 96. There's really no reason to do anything with it. The video component in Soundjack really isn't that great, so we're going to talk about then what we do um, later on in the third video in order to have synchronous video with you and your pianist. But for the time being, it's not going to be through this. It takes up too much bandwidth and it slows down your latency. So now we're going to go to this column over here. As you can see, it starts with localhost, which is where you just get a sense of what the local um, uh, hookup is and the amount of latency between you and your other user. So notice when you come down, there are names, there's odd names, there's Virginia Mirror, there's David Newman, who I don't know, and look, up oh, there's me. So anyway, you would know I am on Soundjack when you signed on. Uh, we're pretty much going to ignore this column, this column, this column. However, this column here, I'm going to click on localhost. It says connect to test. And notice I get these numbers over here. This is how many milliseconds it's taking between point A and point B, you and the person you are connecting with. Also, now this other little buffer, this little tiny window, is called a jitter buffer. Notice it's flashing more red than green. Um, the lower the number, just like it says in that little window that pulled up, generally the better the quality of the connection. But right now, since I'm on Wi-Fi connecting just via Wi-Fi to Soundjack, like you're going to be doing in the building, I'm going to raise this number a little bit until it mostly stays green. No, I'm going to raise it just so that it stays green and it's stable. It's really kind of hard when I'm when I'm just on Wi-Fi and I'm kind of so far away, but still the latency is pretty good. So anyway, I am going to turn the local host off. So what you would do is once you saw me online and you've signed in or your pianist, you click one of these little green buttons in order to invite the person you want to connect with. And a little uh, window will come up that says, do you want to accept or decline? And obviously you click accept. And then you should be able to hear one another. Um, really through the computer, you can't really adjust anything very much. But you can adjust your sound level. And as I said before, it's important to have wired, uh, what we refer to as open back headphones. And I'm going to show you what I purchased for students in my studio. It's a very cheap, inexpensive pair of open back. You can see this is perforated. Um, it comes with a three quarter inch and a mini adapter. Uh, and you just plug that directly into your headphone port on your laptop. Uh, note Apple um, earbuds and generally Apple wired headphones with a microphone on the wire do not work. You get feedback from the microphone on the wired Apple headphones. So you really should invest in a cheap, again, $15. They work just great. Now, I'm going to jump a little bit to another version of using Soundjack and your laptop. If you would choose, say, at home to add a component that would better improve the sound quality of your connections. What you might want to do is you might want to add something called an audio interface. This is a PreSonus audio box. This is just a name brand, a brand that um, we have in the voice studios. Um, it's $99 on B&H Photo in New York, but with an educational discount, it's $80. And you can notice, once you have this, you would want to plug in an external mic, okay? You have one external mic port, two external mic ports. Um, this 48V is called a phantom power. So if you bought a microphone that is not a USB microphone, that would have to be powered they call that phantom power. We turn that button on. That's a part of all audio interfaces. This one has uh, audio adjustments for mics one and two. This has a, a playback we have found on the PreSonos. If you buy this, pretty much you want the uh, dial turned all the way over here to playback. Here's your microphone level, I mean, excuse me, your headphone levels, and then a kind of a main um, uh, little button here to kind of deal with the gain whether you know things are clipping or it's too much and you can you can take and and um, get rid of certain decibel levels okay so if you chose to have that 
then you would also need something like this, especially with an Apple computer, you can see with the C USB-C interface. This is one called a Moken, where it has an ethernet connection and USB connections. So what you would do is you would take your PreSonus and the USB uh, cable that comes with it, and you would put it in the USB port here. Then you would hook up your microphones and then you would use the stage the same way. However, when you get to this part, input, output, it would want to say audio box or PreSonus or Focusrite or whatever name the audio interface is that you have purchased. Then you also want to go back into the system preferences in the sound <clears throat> tab and also make sure that input output matches whatever audio face you may have purchased. Again, that's just a little better way to improve your connections. Let's say if you're at home, I wouldn't suggest doing this at school. I think for coachings, you guys should just take your laptops in a practice room or a room um, and use it this way uh, with your MacBook Air microphone or external headphones. There are ways, obviously, if you have an external microphone to connect it, but this is the way you're gonna be able to connect with your collaborative artist pianist for coachings. For your lessons, we have installed something called a Fast Music Box, which is a uh, completely self-contained small CPU mini computer that is running SoundJack in the Voice Studios. Um, and I'm gonna outline that in the next video. And then in the third video, I'm gonna talk about those video platforms such as Jitsi Meet and Live Lab, where you can have up to three people uh, on a video call uh, while you are on SoundJack making face-to-face -face music. So I hope this video is helpful and I look forward to having you all at CU this fall.